Hey guys, we're Brent and Sarah. This is the couple behind Dashboard Living. And this week is episode five of our vegan series. And we went to the Wooden Monkey. What's our vegan series called? You didn't say it. Ma the Meatloaf. <laughs> the wooden monkey as you know we've been trying out some different vegan friendly restaurants or vegetarian friendly restaurants and just seeing what options are available to us and this was not our first time at the wooden monkey no we were there a couple probably a couple months ago yeah we were there for my birthday and we've been there a number of times in our life and we've always enjoyed our food so we've been there as meat eaters and ordered they they serve beautiful um, dish, different kinds of dishes. What was really cool this time is we actually got to sit down with Lil, the owner, yeah. and talk about the whole process from how the, the idea, the business idea evolved and all the way through to where they are today and some upcoming plans. Yeah, so I think an important thing to point out is that the Wooden Monkey is not a vegan restaurant. They offer vegan options but that was something that Lil definitely wanted to get across. We're gonna let her talk to you. It was really cool after having been to the restaurant so many times yep. in our life to speak to one of the owners and one of the founders and actually get a sense of how passionate she is about everything that she stands for. So we're gonna let her chat with you about all of that. But we will tell you uh, briefly what we had. I had the lentil burger. And you guys, it is probably the best lentil burger I think I've ever had in my life. No, you, it's the first lentil burger you've ever had in your life, isn't it? No, I've had lots. Oh, but I was going to say, I would say, because I had a bite of his lentil burger, I had the rice bowl and I really, really loved it too. Interesting fact, this rice bowl is really the first time I've enjoyed tofu that wasn't fried in pad thai in my life because it comes with like a marinated crispy tofu, which was delicious. But the burger was awesome. The lentil burger is probably my favorite of all the things that we've tried so far at any of the restaurants. It was delicious and I will order it again as a non-vegan because it was, and Lil said it was really popular, even amongst people who are not vegan because it's so good. But we're not gonna keep talking to you. We're gonna let Lil tell you what she's so excited about and what she's so passionate about, how the wooden monkey got started and to answer some common questions that we had for her. Try the lentil burger, it's awesome. My name is Lil McPherson. I'm the co-owner and founder of the Wooden Monkey Restaurant. How did you get started? Well, that's an interesting story. It was uh, probably about 13 years ago. It was uh, September 29th, 2000 and, uh, 2003. Uh, Hurricane One came slamming through this province. And uh, we were, I don't know if you remember that, but it was pretty significant. It was a hurricane that we're not quite used to, or well, we're not used to that at all. I was here, you weren't here. I was in Newfoundland. Yeah. yeah, and believe it or not, I was in Vancouver trying to fly home. I couldn't fly home because of the hurricane, so good thing they didn't try that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, when I landed and came home, uh, the devastation of the province and being without power for nine days really started to get me thinking, really scared me actually. And I, I remember sitting in the dark, trying to figure out what I'm gonna feed my own children, mm -hmm. worked out the next nine days. Uh, I started thinking about, well, how are we doing as a province? We're, we're almost an island. Uh, we, you know, wait for, you know, the whole industrial food system out there to bring our food into Nova Scotia. It's like 95% of our food comes from away. And before that, I did a lot of studying on the food system. And it's sort of been like that for the last, probably since I got pregnant, basically. It started changing for me. And, and I'm not a... A hippie or anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing wrong with hippies, mm -hmm. but I've, people think that. But it's actually, I was really always interested in a healthier food system, not health food, healthy food from healthy animals and and healthy vegetables. So, so that whole um, that whole thing sort of came all to a head, and it was a perfect storm. And I started to also study about climate change, and I knew in my gut that this was uh, a climate change storm. When the waters get warmer, the storm gets stronger, and you're seeing this more and more. And so I decided, what can I do? And I was a waitress, and I worked in the restaurant business my whole life, and went to the farmer's market, and, and did all that. And I just said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so scared now. Seriously, it shook me so much. I thought, we have to do something. We have to rebuild the food system back in Nova Scotia. So we have food security. People don't even know what that word means. And, and healthy food, and build up the local economy, and, and make us healthier, and it's all these things. And it's a pretty big story that way. but. Uh, started to come into play and I was just said, okay, uh, 
well, I know the restaurant business, so I'm going to open a restaurant that that uh, focuses on uh, the system and the life that I want for m myself, my children, and your children, mm -hmm. and, and and everyone. And so uh, that's how it all started. If this is going to go exactly the way that you always dreamed, mm -hmm. what's that vision? Okay, that I love that question because mm -hmm. that's. That's the vision, and I tell people, this isn't a dream, it's a vision. If I had to say everything was perfect, I would. I have the vision for Nova Scotia to be basically the Garden of Eden uh, in this country, in this in this world. I've been very also blessed that Monkey has completely changed my life, and I've been to world conferences, United Nations conferences, three of them, and, and I know uh, now and in the future, people will be looking for places that are green and clean and pristine and healthy. So we are the perfect size. So I would like to transform Nova Scotia into the, into the Garden of Eden province where people are like, wow, you have to come to Nova Scotia. All the restaurants are, are growing local food and eating local food. Cancer is down. It's great. People are healthier. What's going on? And I, I that's true food security for me because local food tastes so good. To be self-sufficient, to be healthy, to be have a really strong uh, economy for our agricultural people, we can nail it. If somebody's wanting to make a change, like they feel like they know something's not quite right, mm -hmm. and they want to start somewhere, but they feel overwhelmed. Yep. Where should they start? If, if I, I think people come in all the time that want to make a change, and a lot of it's driven by health, because people uh, will mention that uh, I've been in this business for probably, you know, forty years, <laughs> and I've been serving food for that long, and never my whole life ever seen so many sick people coming into this restaurant. And all all the chefs, everybody talking about it, gluten free, sensitive, and celiac, and they're all coming in at 20, 25, 28, very young. So there's something going on. So that's a big part of change, and uh, a big part of that story is is uh, is what we're spraying on our our food. That's a whole different. I'd love to get into that at some point. But anyway, flour, mm -hmm. sugar, and oil are the big ones. You can just uh, try to stay away from white flour. It's it's a killer. It really is. And and it's it's being very. It's been dosed now with glyphosate, which is uh, I could talk about that. But it's really quite quite scary, really horrifying actually. Glyphosate is a, it's a patent antibiotic and they're using it as a desiccant now in Canadian wheat and that's why everybody's stomach's blowing up. Because every time someone eats a piece of pizza, a donut or a hot dog or a bun, they're eating an antibiotic. And uh, that's, that's not known and the reason why I know that is because I went on tour with uh, uh, one of our Canadian uh, GMO scientists uh, who was the head of the, the genetic department in Canada. Federal and he came out of retirement, French, beautiful man, and, and we put it. We did a cross Canada tour, and I helped him do the East Coast. So I learned that, and I was like, oh my god. So it's not the gluten; it's the glyphosate. He says so. There's a there's a lot to that, but yeah, it, try to get people. And organics really expensive at some points, but just unsprayed and and um, but yeah, get, try to get people to think about what they're eating. That's the big thing. It's like you know, they can make a difference, and and little. You're not going to turn the whole train around right away or, or the ship, but but you can say, okay, I'm going to change my flour. Oils will kill you. Oils will heal you. So oils, a big one, and sugar. You know, maple syrup and honey. Awesome. Are there any misconceptions that you would love to clear up about the wood monkey? We're not a vegetarian. Everybody thinks we're vegetarian because we win awards, vegetarian friendly, vegan friendly. Yeah. And the, the funny thing is when I opened the restaurant, Christine and I said, okay, I don't want to split the family up. I want everybody to be welcome. So we need to have one, I'll tell you the story, one father came in one day and we had dinner with his family and he was leaving. And I just asked him how everything was. He goes, I love it here. You know why? I said, why? Tell me. He goes, well, he said, honestly, he said, I'm a meat lover. I love your burgers. I love beer. I love your pizza and I love my beer. Okay. My wife's vegetarian. My daughter, she's vegan. And she, he said, I was like, oh, God, you're kidding me. Like, he was really cute. He was like, like she had a disease, right? And my other son, well, he's fussing, you know. But we all could come here. We all feel welcome here. And I, I thought, that's why I don't want to split the family up. And so that's the thing. I would like to tell people that we're not, even though a vegetarian is awesome, and I'm almost myself, I, so, you know, I, I love vegetarian meals, but uh, we're not vegetarian. And, and uh, there's, a, there's a whole misconception about meat is so bad for the planet. It is. That meat is really bad. That meat is destroying the planet. But people, there's a whole new story which uh, is about sequestration and farming. Huge. 
we can eat our way of climate change. For me, the critical um, subject right now is food and climate change. And I was very proud to be one of the first presenters that were trained with Al Gore in, in Canada. There was 200 people that signed up. I was one of them, which is a really amazing experience. I've gone to three different camps with uh, the team uh, down in the States. And so I've seen a lot and really scared you of climate change. And so what the good news is, it's the, it's actually makes me, when I heard this first time in Copenhagen at the United Nations Climate Conference, seven countries got together and they said, uh, they talked about small scale sustainable farmers are cooling down the planet. And I was like, what are they talking about? So they started talking about sequestration and doing the, the, be, the, the better garden, the better farming. And it's all permaculture, organic, old school farming is actually sequestering the carbon back down in the soil and doing wonderful things. It's the only technology on the planet that can actually reverse the emissions of the atmosphere. And uh, there's a, there, now there's a scientific study done. It's over 33 years in the United States. It's called, it's from the Rodale Institute. To me, it's one of the most important papers on the planet. And it's been brought to the climate conferences. And it's a whole study on peer reviewed, scientifically proven that this can change. It's a game changer. So the industrial food system is, is making, causing the emissions to go up in the atmosphere from, cow, from cows to vegetables to everything to monoculture, serious farming, uh, industrial farming is causing it and, and the good system, the farming, small scale farming is solving it. Yeah. That's the biggest, to me, that's the biggest story I heard that and I was like, I got to get on that road with this yeah. because to tell people you can actually, uh, you know, do more of, a, a, of an impact by buying local food than you can buy a hybrid car. Mm -hmm. It's huge. The, the fork causes more emissions than the car key. Yeah. And it's and it's really, plus we're, you know, we're solving everything. We're cleaning our rivers and then we're building up our local economy. We're bringing health and, and every, everybody gets paid and it gets just a wonderful, the direction we need to go back. To. Zoom right I mean, in, zoom right in there. No, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. So the number one question people ask me all the time is, is what, are, what is organic, what does that mean? And this is just my own explanation, but I tell people, I said, look, organic is what we've been eating and brewing and growing since the beginning of time. And if you believe in Jesus or Buddha, whoever you believe in, they ate organic food. I said, it's been so far removed, so irradiated and pesticide and, and GMO'd and altered so much that that, uh, that food changed. So we need, we need a name for that. We have to name this organic because it doesn't, it has to have a name again. We have to rename old food. So organic food is just, food that's just left alone to grow naturally on a farm with great soil. If people wanted to learn more, mm -hmm. where would you send them? <clears throat> to the market. To the markets. Go and see your farmer and taste the food. I mean, we've complicated food so much it drives me crazy. I mean, uh, that's why we need nutritionists. You need a nutritionist to go to find what to eat. That we, that they were born because we were confused we've torn apart food. The food quality in pasture-raised chickens and eggs and are just, that's where to send them. The food will win. The food just, that's their education. Here, eat this. And and, and then we can, you know, we're not, we're not like, uh, you know, people think we're like a health restaurant, but I'm like, no, we're healthy from healthy animals. Thanks for joining us again, guys, for episode number five. We only have one video left in the series. If you like these videos or you found them interesting, don't forget to share it with your friends. Hit that thumbs up button and leave us a comment and let us know what you thought. Cheers. Bye.